these guys are fanning themselves. They're not in menopause. This is not a hot flash. The hot flash <laughs> I'm about to introduce. Our next guest is the mentee to pro boxer and heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. On my left, standing six feet tall at 245 mm. pounds, is pro heavyweight boxer James the Beast Wilson. <laughs> Good morning. I like that intro, by the way. Did you like that? I like that. Okay, that was good. I, I gave yeah. that to you for free. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you grew up on the streets of L.A. Yes. Life was not pleasant in the beginning. Correct. And your story kind of reminds me a little bit of, of jo George Foreman, mm. who said that he was angry. Right. He didn't know where his next meal was coming from. And it was somebody who came along, a mentor in his life, who told him where to put that anger. Right. right? right. Uh, but how you grew up, just explain to people how your environment does not have to define the rest of your life. Right, correct. You know, like, uh, unfortunately, a lot of inner city kids growing up in South Central um, grew up with a single parent home. Just me and my mom, my siblings. Uh, never knew my dad. If I walked past him on the street, I wouldn't even know it was him, you know? So it was a struggle. Yeah. Um, in and out of uh, juvenile hall and placements and um, foster care, foster care. Um, you know, it was it was it wasn't an easy journey, yeah. especially as as a kid going through that. I had to make decisions on my own. You know, no one would blame you if you were behind bars. That's just how right. we look at it. We go right. all these things stacked against somebody. Uh, we've we've trained ourselves to think this is there's only one outcome for that. Right. What made the difference for you? Because you said you did get into trouble. Right. What right. made the difference? What was a moment where you turned the corner? Kind of like when George Foreman said, "I turned the corner and right. realized that my life did not define me in that way." Right. Well, leading up, you know, it was me going to a group home. But leading up to that, I was homeless. You know, I was sleeping in and out of motels, sleeping on park benches, uh, sleeping in a car packed with everything I owned. And when you slept in motels, it was just right. if you had the money that right. night to do it, right? Because when the food stamps ran out, that was it. You back out on the streets. Yeah. So then it was like, well, how are we going to eat? So, you know, I had to do what I had to do, and not only for myself, but to make sure my mother and my sister ate as well, yeah. you know? And um, eventually it came to a point where, you know, I had to... I had to make a decision, and yeah. I did what I had to do. Uh, I got caught up for it, went to juvenile hall, and I had a choice. They said, you can go to camp and do nine to 12 months, or you can go to a group home. Now, I know if I would've went to camp, I would've done my time, got out, been in the same circumstance. Right. So I know I needed to go to foster care, to a placement, so I got some structure, you know, with my life, right. yeah. All right, and then the idea of boxing. You yeah. were athletic, you've always been right. athletic. Uh, the idea of boxing. When that came up later, that was just totally out of nowhere. You know, I didn't, I didn't grow up boxing. I'm not one of those kids who did it like I do with my kids now. Yeah. Um, it just kind of happened. I was playing football, and one day I was like, you know what? My passion is the same for football. And I had the opportunity to play in the NFL. And my passion was the same. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do more because I know I got more of myself. Yeah. So I went on, and I found a dojo, started training, and uh, – just kind of took off from there. Yeah. People hit the canvas. And then Mike Tyson yeah, took notice yeah, of you. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was a very wild moment because um, that's somebody I looked up to growing up my whole life. You yeah. Know? And for him to watch me and to see his reaction is like, wow, like, damn, this is the beast. Yeah. You know, to pay respect to me. Okay. So, like, people have their names. Right, how, right, did, right. how did we come up with? Well, I can see why you're the beast, but how do we come up with the beast? You know, it just, it just kind of stuck. Like, everything I do, I go hard. I go 100%. You know what I mean? It's like, whatever you're going to do in life, you need to give your all. You're not going to be successful at it, period. Right. So, and that's how, you know, the beast came along. All right. And yeah. the beast is in, in, in top of his game. Absolutely. All right. Because, yeah, there, there are... There are people who do this, but to get to the right, top, that right. is a that is a journey, right, as you yeah, talked about. Absolutely. Look at that right there. Wow, look at the beast. You're sweating and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to stop before I get in trouble. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it, but I think a lot of us, it's just yeah. hard to, when you think about a, 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 something to do for a living, mm -hmm. getting punched in the face is not one of my, right, my right, things. Right, like, right. like It's kind of like, like like a rodeo rider, right? You mm -hmm. know, it's like, I'm going to get up on an angry bull and ride it. Right, um, right. So <laughs> to, to do that takes a different mindset. Yeah, we're a different breed of people <laughs> who just you know we're going to go get punched in the face and not only in the fight but every day in training yeah. so it's definitely you know everything starts with the mindset all right one sure. of the things that you do because you know where you came from right. you want to give other young boys and girls who are dealing with tough situations uh, a chance a, a glimpse of what can be right. and so tell us some of the things that you're involved in yeah i do a lot of work with kids on the side um mainly foster care probation youth those will be considered okay. at-risk youth you know and um, I went and started programs at foster cares and group homes all around Los Angeles, teaching them discipline through martial arts, through strict conditioning, and, uh, you know, just kind of give back. Because at one time, I was one of those kids, you know? Yeah, so I know yeah. what they're feeling emotionally and mentally. So 
Yeah, I go yeah. shed some light. Like, yo, I made it out. So can you? You teach your your sons. You're teaching them. Yeah. They're in training. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you're in town for Trey Day. Yes. There's another person who yes. has uh, been a great a great mentor in this community right. as well. All right. I'm just gonna have to do it. I know your belt's over there. Your boxing gloves over there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to do it. Don't don't punch me. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And for more information on James Beast Wilson, we have a link on Great Day, Houston.com. Okay.